Hi, my name is Elvis Dean and I'm a filmmaker and animator in Toronto, Canada. I'm excited to talk to you today about my project, The Sky's the Limit, and how I've been using some of iClone's newest features to make it happen. The character at the center of my film, Griff, is someone I had created almost 20 years ago. I wrote a series of short sci-fi action films that were inspired by the works of Gendy Tartakovsky like Samurai Jack and The Clone Wars, and it was long before there were affordable characters or assets to buy in online marketplaces. So I had to model, rig, texture, and animate everything by myself, which proved to be way too much for one person to do alone when you're doing a big sci-fi project. I think I worked on it for over a year and I never finished more than two minutes of the animation. I later used some of those assets to make a comic with Griff, and every few years I would revisit the character and look at the old scripts, but it was only in the last three years, once I started to work with Character Creator and iClone, that I started to think that maybe I could work on something big again. I've now done a few test projects with different versions of Griff and iClone, but they were mostly limited to people talking, basically scenes that I could do with motion capture in my living room. But that started to make me think that working on my dream project could be possible. The Sky's the Limit is a sci-fi thriller about Griff helping a group of people to escape their planet. It's got so many characters, locations, action set pieces, robots, futuristic slums, a couple of spaceships, and maybe a few big crowd shots if everything goes well. Secure all exits into deep lock. Alpha team in position. Beta, good to go. Gamma Sector is secure. What's held me back from working on it in the past was not just the giant scope of the project, but having to animate action scenes. I've always found animating action to be very hard when doing keyframe animation. And there are some scenes that I had in my head that I thought I could never animate by myself. And I was even too intimidated to try a lot of the times. But Accupose has really helped me to animate the action as I imagined it. It's like a helping hand to guide you into getting a more realistic pose for the action you're animating. In this scene, I wanted Griff to jump up and climb a pipe to the roof, and Accupose made that so easy using the wall crawler model. Once I had my initial pose, it was literally a few minutes of work to get him to climb all the way up. I could just move the hand, foot, and hips to the place I wanted, and the rest of the body would follow. When I had Griff swinging a pipe at the robot, I could grab some poses from the AccuPose Sword and Shield model and tweak them to fit what I needed. This made it really fast for me to set my key poses and then go back in and do my in-betweening and make sure the motion looked good. One of the things that stopped me from animating big action scenes in the past has been that I would get so frustrated when I edited movements. I'd get some jerky motions between the keyframes, and I'd never be able to sort out why it was doing what it was doing. To me, the new motion trails is amazing. It's really helpful when I'm editing animation. I can turn it on for a body part, and it makes it so easy to visualize the movement in 3D space without looking at the curve editor. In this shot here, I wanted some smooth motions when Griff would swing the pipe in big curved arcs, and I love that I get a way to visualize that right in the viewport. I can move his hand a little bit and get real-time feedback of what the curves look like with the new change. It also makes it easy to change a specific keyframe. I can select it right in the viewport and the corresponding key gets selected in the timeline. I love that AI motion capture has become so easy to do in the past two years. It's been a total game changer for me when it comes to doing dialogue scenes and smaller actions. But the trade-offs versus using a high-end motion capture system is that there are a lot of imperfections with the data captured. When you're only getting the motion information from one angle, there can be problems with how someone is standing or the AI has to guess where an arm goes when it goes behind the body. There have always been great tools for fixing these problems in iClone. There's foot contact to make sure the feet don't go through the floor. Edit motion layer is great for adjusting parts of the body and editing the overall performance. But those little micro jitters that exist in most motion capture data can really break the realism of a performance. In the past, when I'd clean up my motion capture data, I'd smooth the data out to get rid of any jitter. But that could mean losing the most extreme poses in a performance. 
which is a killer when you're doing a big cartoony motion like I often do. The new Butterworth filter in iClone really changes that. The performance I do on camera is what I'm getting on my character. The cleanup tools in general just work fast, which just means I have more time to work on the creative aspects of the project. I also love that iClone integrates so easily with Unreal Engine. This lets me get fab marketplace assets to use as my sets and props, and I can get my characters into the finished set easily. To me, technology is always at its best when it's getting out of the way of the artist and just letting them create. iClone has really given me a big palette of tools to work with, and makes it so easy to combine motion capture performances, keyframe animation, and now AccuPose to create any scene I can imagine. After almost 20 years, I finally got everything I need to work on my dream project, and honestly, that feels amazing. Very, very welcome. 